I'm not sure you can make it from there. I'm not sure. Worried, distressed, and helpless over the whereabouts of his 17-year-old brother, John, as a recently rescued human trafficking victim from Nigeria. His brother remains with their captors. They have been lured from their home country with a promise of greener pastures upon arrival. But that wasn't the case as they rather were locked up in a room with many others under very inhuman conditions and forced to engage in internet fraud. The abuse was so severe that John managed to find a way to escape the traumatizing experience. He however failed to take his younger brother with him and now... He is devastated. When I was escaping myself, he was sitting down on the laptop crying. And I just do him like this. On his, I just tell him that I should call this man. He should not bother about it again. That's what I told him. How old is this your brother? 17 years old. How do you feel right now knowing that you're not sure where your brother is, how he's feeling, and whether he's even alive? Sure, because I experienced it. And I know that now that he's in there, maybe if you do something bad now, they are going to beat him. Even though you do something good now, they are going to beat him. He cried to them, they are going to beat him. Anything he do, they will just beat him and they will be suspecting he is going to look for a way to escape. His experience is corroborated by another victim, Prosper Kalu. He's a fashion designer in Nigeria and was also lured into Ghana with a promise of better prospects for his business. But all that was a deception. We feed once in a day and bet once in a day. So that there was a hell there in the room. You can't talk, you can't chat with your neighbor, you can't you can't do anything there. You just go on your own. The seat you can't even move the seat you're sitting on. So it was very hell there in the room. For you as someone who already has a skill that was making you good enough money, how did that whole experience make you feel? I was feeling bad. I was feeling so bad then in the room. I told the man, that was when I was in a week there, I told him I want to go back to my base being Lagos. He said I'm going to pay a sum of 500000 before he will allow me to go. And before I leave, he will beat me and take my phones along. Ladies too are not left out. Sarah, just like Kalu, was assured of a job but was rather forced into sex trade. She now has a son and isn't sure what to do. One day I went to meet her. I'm not giving you any money again. Enough. So you, you paid her 600 CDs out of the 800. Yes. She said you have to start afresh. Yes. And I went to go and meet her. I said, enough. You want to, did you want to kill me? How, what were you doing to make the money? Did she, she, did she bring me for the share work. I, one day I called her that. Mavis, I told you I'm fashion designer. So all this one, I can't do it. You want to spoil all my life with all this. Say, did not mind though. Did you see how I am? So me too. I say, because you, you want it. Me, I didn't like it. Say, you didn't mind oh. Oh, but, 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 Go out, go out, go out. My customer wants to. Ah. According to the International Labour Organization, there were 40 million people in modern-day slavery in 2017. This included 25 million people in forced labour and 15 million people in forced marriage, with one in four victims of modern-day slavery being children. In Ghana, despite the enactment of many laws against modern-day slavery, children and women continue to be trafficked internally and outside the shores of Ghana to other countries. Action Aid Ghana, a human rights-based organization who were concerned about this development, had in partnership with the General Agricultural Workers' Union carried out a baseline study on the subject. The findings were quite disturbing. After collecting data from almost 1,000 stakeholders, it was revealed that modern-day slavery was high in Ghana. There was a 46% increase in the reported human trafficking cases for the period 2020 and 2021, with poverty cited to be the major cause. Samo Sabuli is the project manager for the Combating Modern Slavery in Ghana project by Action Aid Ghana. He provides more perspectives. Um, the study showed that there has been a 46% um, rise in the incidents. And in terms of absolute numbers, we are talking of between the period of 2019, there were total cases reported to the Human Trafficking Secretariat as much as 699 cases. That 
came down significantly between um, 2019 to 2020 to a total of 399, uh, 499, which is good. But we, we, we realized that the incidence rose up again, or the numbers increased again, to a total of 727 cases, which is where the 46% um, rise I'm talking about comes in. Key to this conversation is the Anti-Human Trafficking Unit of the Ghana Police Service. Chief Superintendent Michael Barr heads the unit. It is not um, good enough to only rescue and then let these perpetrators um, uh, go scot-free. So we are investigating and then making sure that um, the perpetrators are brought to justice. And just uh, uh, yesterday, about four of these perpetrators, sex trafficking traffic, uh, perpetrators, were convicted and sentenced, two of them to five years, and then the other two, uh, six months. And after that, we liaise with, um, uh, we liaise with a, um, the Human Trafficking Secretariat of the Gender Ministry to uh, reintegrate the victims that we have rescued. Even though the government is through through various agencies trying to offer help to some of these victims of human trafficking, it often is not enough. This is where private homes like Great Mission International Rehabilitation and Children's Home run by Pastor John Nyavo come in. But how do they get these victims into their shelter? Social welfare, the police and the courts, they bring the, key, the keys. Yeah. Um, why do they bring them to you? It is because they know we are lancers and they know how we work with children and they love what we're doing. They trust us, reason why they bring, it, bring the children. So tell me about what you do for the people who come here. What's the process? Uh, anyway, we, it depends the ages. We've been having babies. If you go to Nugua right now, you'll see babies we have. And we have uh, young men like the one you, are, you just interviewed. And what we do is, at least we work on them psychologically. We also care for them physically and also make sure we help them emotionally so that they recover from their trauma and every problem they were in before they got to us. Pastor Nyavo may be doing his best to help reintegrate these victims into society. He, however, has a funding challenge. Many of his tractors for housing more people are yet to be completed. But beyond providing help for victims of human trafficking, what can the general public do to avoid falling prey? When they are promised anything, they need to do due diligence. They can contact the Anti-Human Trafficking Unit of the Ghana Police Service at the CID headquarters or any regional uh, Anti-Human Trafficking Office to find out more about um, such an organization. We can even subject that organization to some background check to find out whether in fact that even uh, that organization actually exists and what the man is saying uh, is true. To check this rising concern in the country, Action Aid Ghana recommends more sensitization campaigns, advocacy for legal reforms of anti-modern slavery laws, among other measures. In terms of prosecution, that is one of the key elements of assessing the performance of a country as far as the annual um, trafficking in person report is um, uh, released by the U.S. state agencies. The number of cases that you are able to prosecute and to gain convictions is a plus to the country's effort. And therefore, we keep advocating that there is a need for the court system to have a fast track system for some of these cases. Because if you delay in the prosecution of these cases and then the gaining of conviction out of these cases, it has implications on even the public purse. Because we'll have to keep these victims or the survivors of the trafficking case or whatever form of abuse at the cost of the state. In order to address this menace in the country, the government must adequately resource all anti-human trafficking institutions in the country. But we, on the other hand, as individuals, must ensure that we are security conscious so we do not fall prey to such unscrupulous persons. Well, on a brighter note though, the brother of Thangor John has finally been rescued by the police and is safe. Reporting for City News, my name is Michael Obudu.